Hey everyone, it's Jason Dunn here from Laptop Thoughts, and this is the Samsung QX410. This is a 14-inch notebook that weighs in at around five pounds, so it's uh, it's it's sort of on the thin and light side, but not you know as thin and light as something like the ultra lights that are in the three-pound range. So this is the box. I'm going to pause the camera and I'll show you what's inside. All right, and we are back. So. The box was pretty boring. It's a you know a decent packaging experience, but it's nothing like Apple. Let's face it, not many companies are. So inside the box, there's a couple different things. Uh, we have this large um, uh, cardboard container here, and this is going to be all the power stuff. So we have standard uh, wall cable here, and then sort of a standard size AC adapter. We'll just pop it out here. Um, you know, uh, this is entirely standard. There's nothing innovative about this uh, particular setup. Um, I guess partially, you know, honestly, after using a MacBook Air for a couple weeks and seeing, you know, the thought that they put into their power adapters, it's, uh, well, it's a little bit boring to go back to the regular old plug it in, away you go. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing optimized about this particular setup for travel or, or whatever. So, yeah, you know, I think, uh, a little bit of uh, effort maybe could go into something like this to make it more appropriate for uh, business travelers you know, or someone that likes to carry something uh, with them that is small and light. We have our instruction manuals. Uh, it's flexible, which means there are no uh, CDs or DVDs that come with the product. I imagine there's some sort of a factory restore that is uh, on the hard drive itself. But what we really care about is the actual laptop. Let me zoom out just a little bit here so we can get a better look at this beauty. So, um, as you can tell, it is, uh, it's fairly thin. Um, it's not, you know, razor sharp thin, but I would say it's certainly on the thinner side of, uh, of laptops. We have a sort of a brushed aluminum top here. I'll just take off the plastic and we'll take a look at the finish. We'll turn it around so the Samsung logo is facing up. Wow, I really, really like that. Um, it's certainly nothing exactly new to have a finish like this, but I like the finish because it fingerprints. It's not ex it's not a fingerprint magnet. You know, fingerprints kind of come off this. I really like the textured look of this. Uh, Samsung logo, eh, maybe it's a, maybe a little bit too obvious for my liking, but it's not nearly as bad. Samsung had this really great netbook out. Uh, I think it came out in 2009 or early 2010. Great netbook, amazing design, but then they put Samsung across the entire thing in this giant ass font, and I, I thought it was... Uh, Kind of ridiculous, frankly. Uh, so I'm glad to see Samsung had a little more uh, subtlety, shall we say. So let's talk about um, what's in the notebook here. Uh, so I'm going to turn it around so we can actually see it here. So this, again, is the QX410. Uh, it uses Windows 7 Home Premium, the 64-bit version of the operating system was loaded up here. It packs uh, a decent amount of power. It comes with an Intel Core i5 processor 460 that is a 2.53 gigahertz of power with a 3 meg cache. So it is a dual core uh, system. It's not, a, it's not a Core i7, so there's not four cores. It has four gigs of RAM, which are uh, two two gig chips. And it has a 14 inch uh, screen. We can pop it open here and we can take a look at the screen. So there is the display. Obviously, as you can already tell, it is a high gloss uh, screen. So there's no, uh, there's nothing subtle about this particular screen. One of the things that Samsung points out on their website is the uh, large trackpad. That's one of the things that they feel is uh, an, uh, I guess a standout feature for this particular laptop, and as you can tell, uh, there are well, actually, there are there are clickable areas. So I actually prefer the click, the physical click, as opposed to just the soft click. Because call me old-fashioned, but I like to be able to you know put my finger here and then do this and, and actually feel a bit of a click. One thing to note about the keyboard, uh, unfortunately, Samsung has inflicted my number one pet peeve upon the uh, Canadian users. So this is a Canadian version of the laptop. So you uh, Americans or other people around the world will probably not see this, but it's a French-English keyboard. 
with this little itty bitty uh, shift key right over here. And unfortunately what that means is that if you are a touch typist like me and you're used to typing really fast, you're gonna get nailed by this. Um, it's really hard to adapt to a left shift key. I actually did a survey on Laptop Thoughts when I asked people which shift key they use, you know, the right shift key or the left shift key. And it was something like 70 or 80% of people use the left shift key primarily and never even touch the right shift key. So. By Samsung making this key smaller, it frankly really irritates and frustrates a lot of us touch type users. I can't speak for everyone, of course. There may be some people that have no problem with this. Obviously, if you need to type in French on a regular basis, you're gonna wanna have you know, this key. But for me personally, um, this, believe it or not, I would not purchase this laptop for that exact reason. I cannot stand having this key and I refuse to give my money to any company that uh, forces this type of keyboard on its users. Users. I'll double check with Samsung and see if maybe there's an English variation of this that's sold in Canada, but in my experience, for the most part, uh, when you see a keyboard like this, it means that, that that is the one and only version available in Canada. So, enough about my keyboard rants. All right, so let's take a look at what is on the side of this laptop. We have a Kingston uh, lock, so this is where you attach the little uh, lock and it'll uh, secure your laptop, although I'm a little bit dubious about how well they work, but you know, you can give it a try. We have the st uh, totally standard power plug here. We have the uh, gigabit ethernet here. I realize this is a little bit hard to see because it's black on black. It's hard to get an angle, but uh, yeah, there's gigabit ethernet. Uh, VGA here, it's uh, nice to see VGA because frankly, even though you know it's a bit of a dying standard, there's still a lot of uh, projectors out there that use VGA and it's really important to have this if you know you're traveling for business or whatnot. Underneath this panel, again, a little bit hard to see because of the black on black, but we have an HDMI port here, which is great. It's awesome to see HDMI. HDMI and VGA, I think, are the two ports that laptops should have. So you can interface with uh, newer projectors, TVs, etc., and then also older projectors and TVs. We have USB port here, another USB port here. They're both USB 2.0 ports, so there's no USB 3.0 on this laptop yet. We have a headphone, or sorry, a, a microphone jack here, and we have a headphone jack, so let's put that away. If we look at the front of the laptop, there's really nothing to speak of. You can see a little bit of an air vent here for venting heat, but there's nothing else on the front. If we look at the side, we have an SD card slot here. Interesting, so it's not actually a push to eject. You have to kind of dig your fingernail in here and put, put, it, put it in. Uh, it is, so it's an SD card slot, and if memory serves, I saw, yeah, so it's an SD, SDHC, SDXC, so that means it supports the super high capacity uh, cards. We have an optical drive right here, so yeah, this is interesting. It's been a while since I've seen a notebook that's been uh, you know thinner and lighter that's had an optical drive. A lot of them have gone away with that, but it is nice to see you know for some people. And we have a USB port right here, so that's three USB ports. If we look on the bottom here, Essentially, there's not much to see here, although there is a panel that has an uh, upgrade panel for the hard drive and the memory. So this unit, again, has four gigs of RAM. It has two two gigabyte sticks, and you can also access the hard drive in here. I really like the fact that this panel is here. It means it's easy to upgrade. So if you want to swap in an SSD or a bigger hard drive or upgrade the RAM, it's really easy to do. So it is really nice uh, to see that. And then on the back, there's effectively nothing. We just have another kind of heat port here, and that is essentially it. So I'm actually not too sure if this thing has a charge. Um, actually, before I boot it up, let's take a look at the inside here. So I've already talked about the trackpad. I've already ranted about the keyboard. We have a microphone uh, right here. It looks like it is the only microphone. I don't see anything on this side, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be sort of single, not like a dual array microphone. Up here, we have a couple of uh, buttons. We have a mute button, volume up, volume down. We have a, a hard Wi-Fi switch. Uh, it's nice to see a hard Wi-Fi switch because frankly, if you're on an air, airplane or whatever and you wanna turn off Wi-Fi, being able to press a single button to do it, I like that as opposed to searching for sort of like a, a toggle key. That's always mildly irritating. And then up top here, let me just move the camera up here. We have a uh, digital live cam, also known as a webcam. Now, according to the spec sheet I have, that, that webcam resolution is an unknown. It just says webcam. It doesn't actually 
uh, see, say what resolution is. So I've just hit the power button here, and as you can tell, the laptop is booting up, which means it does have power. So this is the initial boot up experience. Uh, we have a little bit of a dusty screen here. I'll clean that off afterwards. Let me tell you a little bit more about the spec. So the 14 inch screen uh, is a 1366 by 768 display. It is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. 1366 by 768, in my opinion, is a little bit low for a 14 inch screen. I love seeing, you know, a 1400 by 900. That's kind of one of my, my preferred display resolu resolutions for 13 inch and 14 inch laptops. So Samsung, they're right in the middle of the pack here in terms of uh, what is typical for the industry, but I wish they would have done something a little bit better. Now, this does have an NVIDIA uh, graphics card. It's an NVIDIA GeForce 310M with 512 megs of DDR3. So that means it's actually dedicated graphics memory. It's not shared, and that, that's also important. It says it has SRS 3D sound effects for speakers. It has three watt speakers. So the speakers, if we just angle the camera down a little bit here, this uh, grill right here is actually the speaker grill, three watt speakers. There you go. Uh, there's, the, uh, there's the boot up sound. Um, I already mentioned uh, it has gigabit LAN. It has 802.11 BGN uh, built in here. I'll be interested to see if the N actually supports the five gigahertz network because there's been a lot of N cards I've seen lately that only support the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, frequency which is kind of silly. It has Bluetooth uh, version three. Uh, the differences between Bluetooth version 2.1 and 3, uh, I'll have to frankly look them up. Bluetooth it kind of is there and it works. It works fine, but you know, people don't tend to uh, check out the uh, specs. It, um, let me see what else here. It has a, uh, yeah, so I'll talk about the built-in ethernet. One thing it didn't have, I don't know if you noticed this when we were looking at the sides, but it actually does not have an express card slot. So that's something that's actually a bit of a bummer because I, I do prefer to see an express card slot on there, specifically for modems and even for flash, uh, flash hard drives. I have uh, a WinTech 96 gigabyte uh, express card hard drive that I'm in the midst of reviewing, and it's a really cool way to add extra really fast storage onto your, onto your product. But uh, of course, you can't do it if the product doesn't have an express card slot. So uh, yeah, now uh, the the battery in here, and I guess that's something I also didn't point out. The battery is built in. So when we were looking at the bottom earlier, you notice there's no removable battery. So for some people, that you know may be a bit of a problem. I've kind of gotten over it. You know, would I prefer to see a removable battery? Yes, but if it means that uh, I can get you know more battery life out of the product by having an integrated battery, then I'm all for having an integrated battery. But. Lenovo does, or sorry, uh, Samsung does say it has a six cell battery, it is 61 watt hours, and Samsung claims seven hours of battery life. So I'm of course gonna be putting that to the test. Um, it is uh, 2.26 kilograms, which is 4.98 pounds. In terms of dimensions, it is uh, 348.5 millimeters this way, going you know width. Uh, in terms of depth, it is 246.6 millimeters, and it is 27.2 millimeters in terms of thickness. And yeah, that's basically about it. So um, I'm of course gonna be using this product and I'm gonna be uh, reviewing it and you know, we'll, 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 see, we'll see how well it works here. Obviously, uh, this unit came uh, to me for, from a PR company, and as you can tell, there was no initial setup. So this this product has actually already been, um, you know, configured and set up. So I'll be uh, checking it out. Uh, we'll take a look here and see maybe if the Windows Experience Index is already up here, so we can at least uh, get that setting for you guys. Yeah. So here we go. I'll just zoom in here. I don't I don't typically show this in, until I've actually done the review of the product, but in this case, I think it's probably pretty useful. Um, Oh, that's interesting. You see here where it says four gigs, um, but it says it's 3.79 gigs usable. That actually means that the the, the memory is is not is not dedicated. At least that, that's what it typically means. I'm a little bit confused because the graphics memory on my spec sheet says 512 megabytes, but up here there's actually about 200 megs that are missing from the memory. So yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit weird.
Not too sure what to make of that. Let's go in here into the Windows Experience Index. So as you can tell, it has a, a 4.3 uh, Windows Experience Index, a 6.8 on the CPU, so very high for a laptop in the CPU, 5.9 on the RAM, pretty average, 4.3 in the graphics, so that's actually the slowest part uh, of, of this score, 5.9 in the gaming graphics, which is decent, but you know, it's, it's not a gaming laptop. I would say more of a general purpose laptop that you definitely could still game on this, but it's not a gaming specific laptop. And then of course the primary hard disk which is 5.9 I never actually mentioned the hard drive. It has a 640 gig, 5400 RPM hard drive. I would have loved to have seen a 7200 RPM hard drive in there, but it is not, again, it's not that uncommon to see laptops out there that use 5400 RPM hard drives. So that basically wraps it up for me. So this has been Jason Dunn from Laptop Thoughts. This has been an unboxing and first impressions look at the Samsung QX410. Again, this is a, a Canadian model, so the Model numbers may differ slightly depending on where you are in the world, but um, overall this is uh, an interesting laptop. It's fairly thin and light. It, uh, it packs a lot of power with that Core i5 processor, and I'll be interesting, interested to see you know, what I think of using this uh, day to day as I benchmark it. One of the things I will say, which is a little bit weird, let me just zoom in a little bit here. Well, weird is the wrong word. As, as I look at this screen in this laptop, the bezel is really thick and then the screen seems to be a little bit high in terms of where it sits. Uh, so you end up with, with an even thicker bezel here. This is not something I'm used to seeing on laptops. Usually the whole thing is uh, kind of seated down a little bit lower. So yeah, Jason Dunn, Laptop Thoughts. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Check out the video description for links on uh, where to buy this laptop. You notice I didn't mention price. I don't talk about price in my videos. Check out the video description. Check out the link and you'll see what the current price of this laptop is, at least in the market that I'm in. And if uh, you're in a different part of the world, you want to do your own research to get the price. And yeah, thanks for watching the video. Subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and thanks for watching.